I'm Barbara Graziosi, I'm Director for the Arts and Humanities of the Institute of Advanced Study at Durham University and I'm here to introduce a very exciting new thing, a national festival of the humanities called Being Human to which we are participating in Durham with a series of events open free of charge for the general public and for uh, school children. It's called Facing Out because it's all about encounter and engagement and that's what we want to have in November. We would like to showcase two projects in particular. One is called Face-to-Face -face Encounters with Ancient Authors and I'll say a little bit more about that in a minute. And the other is called The Ordered Universe and I have here two colleagues to talk about it and I'll introduce first of all uh, Dr. Giles Gasper of the Department of History and the Institute of Medieval and Early Modern Studies. We're here to introduce the Ordered Universe contribution to the Durham contribution to the Festival of Humanities at the topic of being human and we are a unique fusion of medieval specialists, historians, theologians, paleographers, anatomists and modern scientists physicists, mathematicians, psychologists, and I've got Professor Richard Bauer here from the Institute of Computational Cosmology. Our presentation will move from the Dark Ages to Dark Matter, and that's to encapsulate what we do. We look at medieval science, but we do so with the tools of modern science, as well as humanities uh, experts and humanities tools of analysis. We're focusing in particular on an extraordinary thinker of the mid-13th century, Robert Grossetest. He dies in 1253, was a uh, Bishop of Lincoln and before that, but we're looking at his career before even that. So from about 1200 to about 1228, Grossetest is writing a series of extraordinary commentaries on natural phenomena, on the rainbow, on colour, on light, on the generation of sound, and the list can go on. So he encounters questions that we still encounter. What's the world that we live in? What's our place in it? How do we work our way around these, these big questions? And it's bouncing between the 13th century and the 21st century. That's what we do and what we're going to present at the Festival of Humanities. One text in particular that we're going to present is Grosseter's Treatise on Light, which is really about body and the biggest body that you can imagine, the universe. This is a text which particularly showcases where we can use this fusion of modern science and medieval studies. Grosseter's universe begins, because he's a Christian, with a single point of light expanding to form a sphere. It has to begin. He knows that the universe has a beginning. Uh, this is what the Bible says. But from there, he reconstructs the ancient universe with some additions from Arabic philosophy translated into Latin, which he's inheriting in the 13th century. So he has a universe which consists of 10 spheres. When we showed this to the scientists, when we translated, edited, and thought about this text together, they were able to do some extraordinary things, which Richard's going to talk about. So when we were looking through this text, initially I thought, oh, this is just magic. But as we looked and worked on the text much further, we began to see that it made sense, that there was a logical process going on here. And as we dug further and we understood the translation better, we began to realize that we could turn what was said into mathematical equations. And we can then model those using the power of modern computers. And that allows us to see what emerges. And when we do that, we see the universe being created. What we're going to present on November the 18th is a full day where we will take you from manuscript to our various sections, English translation, how we work through the text scientifically and historically, to the mathematical translations, and we'll finish the day with the premiere of a 3D visualisation we've been making of what the Grossetest Medieval Cosmos might have looked like. Part of our Humanities Festival will showcase work done as part of the Living Poets project, which develops a new approach 
to ancient poetry. The poets of antiquity um, are known only through their works. We don't know what they looked like, what they had for breakfast, where they lived, and sometimes not even whether they existed, as in the case of Homer. But through the ages, people reading ancient works developed stories about their authors and imagined their faces, so that we have a very, very rich tradition of representations that do not tell us how the actual poets of antiquity looked like or lived, um, how they lived, but tell us how the readers imagined them through the ages. So our research project looks at portraits and anecdotes, stories and letters relating to the great authors of antiquity as a way of figuring out who imagined them and what value they saw in their works. What we hope to do at the Festival of the Humanities is look at a particular um, instantiation of this general um, desire to imagine the authors of antiquity. And this has to do with one prince bishop uh, who uh, lived uh, in Durham at the beginning of the 17th century and in fact arrived here after he had been in Oxford and in Paris where he had seen fantastic libraries in the new style where you would have portraits of authors, ancient and modern, looking at you while you were working in the library reading their works so that the act of reading was envisaged as a transhistorical conversation with people from many different times and places. And this happened through the history of literature that the act of reading produces a sense of the author, but that sense of the author is an intimate thing that says something about us readers. And so when we're then confronted with the imagination of other readers, we realize that the process of reading is not just an individual thing, but involves a whole community of people from different times and ages and their own responses to literature. We hope that you'll join us uh, on Palace Green uh, to look at Bishop's Cousin Library, find out more about our project, engage uh, with what we have here, with the portraits, with the early modern books, and that you will enjoy the week of activities that we have planned both for the general public and for uh, school children. All events are free of charge. You can get tickets from the World Heritage Visitor Centre on Palace Green. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.